the number one way how I accelerated my photography growth and completely improved my skills. Stay tuned. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, the number one space for new photographers, entrepreneurs, and online content creators. For those of you who are new here, my name is Maria with Maria Phil Photography. I'm a professional destination elopement photographer based in Austin, Texas, but traveling the world to capture some of the sweetest elopements in the most epic locations. For the best advice on how to build and grow your photography business, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified every single week when I make a new video. All right, let's get right into it. So my biggest piece of advice, if you're looking to accelerate your photography skills as quickly as possible and not feel so overwhelmed with it, is to work freelance. And this can look different for a lot of you, but basically the way that I did it was I worked as an independent contractor for a photography company for probably two years. Um, actually, I think it was about a year. Um, oh, here's Cholula. No, no. Hi, you two. This is good for two reasons. One, you get a taste of what it's like to be a professional photographer in the industry. You get hands-on experience. And two, you don't have the pressure of it being your brand. Um, and that doesn't mean that you just get to fool around and do whatever you want, but it does mean that typically you're gonna get hands-on training to be in alignment with somebody else's brand. So it'll give you some ideas on how to build your own brand and what you wanna do and how you wanna do it. So when I was first starting out in photography, I started with a company, um, I'm not gonna give you guys their name because I'm not the biggest fan. And that's okay because basically I worked for them for a little bit as a photographer. They paid me 15% commission, which in my opinion is, now when I look back on that, I think it's ridiculous. And I think that I was totally taken advantage of because I was a novice photographer. That's okay though, because everybody's learning experience is different. And if I hadn't gone through this experience, I wouldn't have I wouldn't be where I am right now. So I worked for them for probably about a year and a half. First I started as a photographer in the resorts, um, making 15%, and then they offered me a position to become a creative director somewhere else on a different branch. And I really think that this was valuable for me because I was able to be in the professional photography industry as well as the hotel and hospitality industry and get so much experience from this. It really helped me shape my own brand and build my own business. Um, from things on like how to dress when you're going to a meeting or how to send a professional proposal, all of these things really add up and add to your skills for becoming a professional photographer. I became a creative director for one of their top branches in their business and it was amazing until it wasn't. So I decided that I was gonna go back to being a photographer because that's where my passion was and I wasn't doing that as the creative director. So I went back to being a professional photographer and knew the numbers that our branch was making just because from being the creative director, I understood what the monthly revenue looked like, which on some months could be over $100,000. So for me, it was a huge confidence boost going out on my own, knowing like, okay, if these guys are hiring amateurs to be hotel resort photographers or what have you, and they're making over $100,000 a month off of photography for the resorts, I surely can go out on my own and start an Instagram page and <laughs> become a professional photographer on my own and build my own business. And that's exactly what I did. I went back to being a photographer with them, making 15% commission to have that as my like padded kind of safe income, my backup plan for the days that I wasn't shooting on my own. And I decided to go 100% on my Instagram. And this was the first year of my business. I did I, I did so well. I built my entire business off of Instagram virtually for free and I never looked back. I think what happened, if I remember correctly, was I left them officially, um, I left them in 
March. So in March I said, don't put me on the books. I'm going to take all my own stuff. And if there's a week where I have extra availability, I'll let you know. And so then, and, and I told them, but for the next following month, chances are I'll want to be on a little bit here and there, but I'll give you my availability at least two weeks before. And I said, okay, great, that's fine. And that was kind of the beauty of being a freelance photographer is uh, I get to set my own hours, I get to set my own availability. Basically, I told them once the once March was coming to a close, I told them for April that I was fully booked out and so to keep me off the schedule. And then the same thing for May and May was my first month that I made $10,000 in one month and I was like, "You know what?" I'm gonna do this on my own and I'm gonna I'm gonna let them create space in their business to bring on new photographers who then can be just like me and build their own business and that's what I did so I told them you know thank you so much you guys have really given me a lot in this position um, it's come to the point where it's time for me to move on I really appreciate everything that you've done for me and I wish you the best they were also very grateful that I was a part of their business for the amount of time that I was and that I helped train other photographers and other creative directors to learn sales and overall the experience was good. Now, after that I went on to be I went on to do only Maria Hill photography and it was so amazing, but it was very exhausting because I was a one-man show so basically I handled all the administrative work I handled all of the editing I handled all of the shooting all of the deliveries like it was a lot so I decided I was gonna start contracting out my editing that was the first th first step that I took to really scaling my business and then I realized you know what I'm feeling really burnt out from editing and even though all I was really doing was the sneak peeks, it was still costing me a lot of money to outsource my editing. So I decided that what I wanted to do was to work freelance again because for certain companies, if you find the right one, you don't do the editing. You just show up, you shoot, you deliver the raws, and that is that. And that's exactly what happened for me next. And this position with this company is what really skyrocketed my composition, my lighting, so much. And I think the reason why I was able to really just like skyrocket and fly off was because with this company they allowed me all the creativity that I wanted and they also trained me so well that it gave me the confidence to really try new things and implement off-camera flash in every single shoot and just nail the shot and it was so good for me. So the company I'm talking about, I am going to share their name with you guys because they're just so phenomenal and I absolutely love them. And this company was for Karma Hill and she is so amazing. She has such a great team. And so basically she has two legs of her business, the Karma Hill portrait side of her business as well as the simple Maui wedding side of her business. So I was able to work for both. The training was the same, but she offered me such great hands-on detailed very detailed training to the point where I felt like just going through her training process made me a better photographer as far as natural light goes you guys know I love off-camera flash and that is my jam but for karma um, she shoots a little different than me so I was able to take her style and really learn it and excel and then also implement my style a little bit so that she gets a variety of natural light and flash portraits. And this was just amazing working for Karma simply because their team was so much better than what I was used to, like 300 times better. And let me tell you, if any of you are looking to elope or do a wedding or anything like that when you're in Maui and I'm not there, please call Karma Hill and her team. They are just phenomenal and that was one thing that I felt really confident as a photographer going into this business and sharing my name on their website and stuff like that was that they just they take care of their clients their reviews are phenomenal and with the other company it was really questionable about 
their customer service, their ethics, lots of things. Um, so with Karma, I felt like not only was I getting an amazing team to work with, but I was getting such great training. And for me as a photographer, it felt like it was a match on my morals and the way that I like to run business and the way that I want my clients to be treated. Even though they're her clients, I still wanted to make sure if I said something like, if I didn't know the answer to a question and I told the, the customer, oh, you know what, the girls in the office will absolutely help you out, that I could stick to my word with that. And that was always true. Let's go over a couple of things that I want you to look for when you're looking for companies to freelance for. You wanna be looking for your compensation to make sure it's in alignment with with the product that you provide. Remember that you're an independent contractor, and if you're not, you should get clarification as to if you're an employee or an independent contractor. This is really important because if you're an employee, this is completely different. And most times you're gonna be an independent contractor. So you wanna look at your compensation and make sure it's a match for what you deserve, okay? You also want to look at the company as a whole and make sure that their values and their morals line up with who you are as a photographer. This is probably the most important thing that you could do. Um, you know, forget pay, forget all the other things. Making sure that the company is in alignment with you as a person is going to be the number one thing. To make sure that you are just simply happy. If this company doesn't line up with you as a person, you're going to be miserable after a couple months. So really take that into consideration. I want you to also look at the team and see that these people are your potential co-workers or potential fellow independent contractors. I feel like when I was working for the other company, the photographers who also worked for them were also my friends. So this was really great for me because I had fun when I went to work. Same thing with Karma. When I got hired on with the Karma Hill team, I had a handful of photographers who were my friends who also worked for Karma. So it was just really fun because when we got to shoot weddings together, it was like, oh yeah, yay, we get to shoot together today. This is so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna focus on this angle with this lens. What are you gonna focus on? And it was like a collaborative effort to do a wedding together. And that is the best thing you could ever ask for. And then the last thing that I think that's really important that you look at is them as a business as a whole and their operations. So are they organized? Do they take care of their clients? What's their process from going from... Um, you know, stranger all the way to booking client and to booking you. These are things that in the interview process, when I was interviewing with Karma, I made sure to ask her like, okay, so, you know, how do you guys send me shoots? What's the organization around that? And what does that look like? Just to know, like, I'm not going to see something on my calendar two hours before a shoot and expect to be there because that has happened to me with the other company before and it's not fun. So, Ask lots of questions in your interview process. Um, it's also really important to ask them questions about their style, their delivery, what their what's their preference on how you shoot. You know, Karma most times preferred that we shot with a lower aperture, which is kind of what shaped my style and really got me into high speed sync. Because you guys know I love my off camera flash. But with high speed sync, that then gave me the availability to shoot wide open and still use off camera flash. And um, I'm going to link some photos right here. The, the links will be in the description below. But I want you guys to see like this is my work when I first started in 2017. This is my work for Karma. There's a big difference big difference and all it really takes is having somebody show you and then repeating and practicing and that's why freelance is so amazing is because you practice 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 and if you're practicing weddings with another photographer as a second shooter there's not that much pressure to really perform like you would as the first shooter so this is going to be next week's video. I'm going to talk about why you should be second shooting, even if you're a seasoned photographer. 
Now there's a few things that you want to keep in mind. When working for Karma, all of the photos that I take for her are legally hers. I signed contracts giving away all the copyrights to the photos that I take for her on her shoots that she books for me. And if you're not signing contracts, you still want to ask permission because it's just good practice to do so. So when making this video, I made sure to ask Karma, hey, I want to feature some of these photos that I've taken before and that are my favorite pieces of work that I've done for you. Is that okay? And Karma is so amazing. She was so willing to let me use my photos and I thought that was really nice because she really didn't have to. So I'm going to put links down below. If you guys are looking to elope or get married or just have a simple refresh on your family portraits the next time you go to Maui, hit up Karma Hill. I can't say more amazing things about them. So check out Karma or Simple Maui Wedding. And also below, I'm gonna put links to her blog posts of the shoots that I've done for her. So you guys can really see and kind of sort through the photos that I've done for them. You'll see the difference in her editing style versus my editing style and you'll be able to really understand that she's kind of more like this tropical, bright, and airy feel to her photos, where I'm a little bit darker, dramatic, and like deep, rich color. And so there's a difference with editing, but as far as composing the shot, they're actually pretty similar. So the way that I shoot today is still pretty pretty much in alignment with the way I would shoot for Karma. And in the beginning, you know, it was a training process and um, they would tell me like, okay, you expose just a little bit to the left. We like you to expose a little bit to the right. Totally fine. When I'm shooting for a wedding, um, nowadays I kind of like to hit it right in the middle, but I still favor the left just a tad because I know what I can do in my post-editing process. But for them, you know, their editing process is a little different. They could still do it. It's not that the images aren't usable. It's just a preference on editing. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but that is my biggest advice to you on how to improve your shooting and your skills in the fastest way possible is to work freelance and let them just book the crap out of you. Just give them open availability, shoot every day. I mean, there were some summers where I was shooting four times a day. I'd do two shoots in the morning, two shoots in the evening, and edit all the images. Oh my gosh, talk about exhausting. But you know what? It's gonna be the quickest way to your success. So get out there, even if you don't have a shoot, just find somebody and be like, hey, can we trade? Do you wanna do headshots for headshots? Just get out there and start shooting. Trust me, you will not regret it. And for those of you who are still struggling with off-camera flash, I want you to go into the description down below. There's a link to schedule a call with me where we can do a 30-minute one-on-one training to help you understand anything you're struggling with. A lot of the questions that I get most of the time are like, what the heck do these fractions mean and how do I use this thing? So basically over Zoom, I'll go over all the basics that you need to know and anything you're stuck on. But yeah, in the description down below. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week when we talk all about why you should be second shooting. Take care, bye.